We've all been there. You're playing super well, you've got your movement and your aim down, getting kills and popping players left, right and centre. You've escaped the wrath of the filthy spawn campers who keep on scoring on you, and you're free. You gather clams unbeknownst to the enemy team, and you've got a power clam in their base too. You score. All that hard work has paid off, and now you're ready to start your push. Wait, what? 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 Why did we lose? I literally did everything. Some players would just blame this loss on their teammates and move on, but that mentality will halt your growth significantly. So today, I'm here to talk to you about why you may be losing in Splatoon 3 despite getting the most splats and scoring the most points. Everyone, let's talk about overextending and team play. According to many sources that I've found online, the best way that I can summarize overextending is the following. To overextend yourself is to try to do too much and push yourself past a margin that you can reasonably reach. And in the context of Splatoon 3, you have to do this all the time. In order to play ranked modes correctly, you will need to develop skills that allow you to push your way past mid and into the enemy base. To do this, you will need to be able to outwit and outperform the enemy team's defenses, whether it be through using specials or winning team fights. This skill takes time and game knowledge, but when you master it, it can become a game changer. So why is overextending too much a problem? Pushing far into the enemy team's base is a great thing to do when you are prepared with lots of resources to use, like specials and other teammates to cover your flak. However, doing this when you're the only player alive with no paint or teammates or special is going to work out as well as running headfirst into a brick wall. Unless you're a human bulldozer with lots of specials and tools and others to support you, that brick wall will always stop you from getting past. That is, unless they are either all unprepared or not mechanically skilled. This is a great example of what overextending too much really is, and if you still can't quite grasp what this is or why it's not as good as you may think, then I'd like to show you an example of too much overextending. Around 20 seconds into the game on Mahi Mahi Resort, my team had the enemy team locked in their base. Five seconds later I go down and as you can see the dapples have an opening to escape since now that I'm gone, nobody is covering that exit from their base. Knowing this, the dapples make their way into mid. The player sees a lot of clams leading to our base and decides it would be best to make their way over to our base and score. And, to their credit, they do score and it gives them 20 points. However, having just died and seeing where the dapple is going, I immediately caught on and caught them out directly after they scored. This restricts the enemy team from jumping to the dapples and keeping up pressure on our side. As a result of this, the enemy is back to square one and this time we managed to score as a team and make a lot more of an impact on the game compared to those dapples. The difference between us and the dapples is that we have teammates and positions and resources to outkeep the pressure, whereas the dapples had none of these and went down very quickly. And even if I go down, the other three team members can hold their own enough to allow me to jump back in. This was something that the Dapples could not do if they went down on their own, since they don't have any teammates to cover them. Now, I know that this may be a little confusing for anyone that's just starting out, or anybody that doesn't really have a lot of knowledge when it comes to making optimal pushes. However, the point that I'm trying to make is that tackling these kinds of things together sees way more success in Splatoon, and really any team-based game. Your teammates are not only attacking and wiping out the enemy team, but scoring and sacrificing their resources to keep the pressure alive. They're the people that you can fall back on if you don't play perfectly, because they might be able to avenge you when you go down, or provide spots to jump back in and continue fighting. When you overextend too much without your team, you're not only at a disadvantage numbers-wise, but when you do inevitably go down, you don't have anyone else or anything else to keep you going. I'm not telling you to stick your teammates like you're connected via Gorilla Glue. You can move away from them if you need to cover somebody flanking or escaping. They're not perfect players and will slip up too. But sticking with them and fighting for points together is by far the easiest and most foolproof way to win. Trusting your team is hard, and you will run into some stinkers that don't play this game correctly. It takes tons of courage to fight with them, and if you do need to direct your teammate, hitting this way may nudge them in the right direction. That being said, don't get mad at them for not playing right all the time. We've all slipped up before, and nobody started knowing how to carry out a push correctly. Remember that your teammates are your power, your resources. They're more valuable than your special and your sub weapon combined, because they have specials and subs too. When you do find teammates that know how to push and apply pressure correctly, there's no better feeling. You feel one and you feel like an unstoppable force that can't be broken. That satisfaction never, ever comes from going at these things alone. Splatoon 3 is a team-based shooter, and I know you've probably heard that phrase a lot, but if you recognize that when you're with your teammates you're stronger, you will find yourself winning more fights and scoring more points. You'll have better defenses, and eventually you'll start winning more and more. 
I sometimes struggle with playing for my team too. I am not a competitive player, but treating these guys like your win condition and supporting them is a great starting point to help you appreciate them more. They are not robots, they have the same objective as you, which is to win. So you should really help each other out with your similar objectives and goals. This mentality is not easy to develop. Getting out of the habit of constantly blaming your team is difficult the further you go down it. However, maybe take some time to stop and reconsider. Were you even being a teammate at all? Were you playing off their weapon strengths and covering its weaknesses? Were you pushing together and not running away like a lone wolf? Ask yourself that next time you go to blame your valuable teammates. I know it's hard to treat these guys with respect. They can still lose you games and you may be watching this doubting that you'll ever get out of the mindset of blaming them. Trusting people online you've never spoken to is just hard, that's a fact. But having good faith and building the courage to face the enemy together is one of the most important things to learn in my opinion. Not just in Splatoon, but in life. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and if this helps you, consider leaving a like. Now go out there, support your teammates with your common goals and have a good day. Take care everyone. I hope this helped.